I recall, uh, on one occasion, a lady, one of the elderly ladies of the congregation, going out the gate of the of the church, and she lifted her two hands up to heaven, and she cried. Oh God, she said, I'm hanging on a thread. In other words, she was so searched by the word of God that she had just heard that she felt as if all hope was swept away from her. Conviction of sin was a reality. And the Bible says that when he, the Holy Spirit, when he's come, he will convince of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. When the Holy Spirit comes, he, he comes with a revelation. First of all, in my case, I would be concerned about what was happening around me as a young person. And uh, one thing that stays in my mind is the sign of some of the people. They used to be so gripped that was preached and probably by the Psalms that were sung, because they were singing the Word of God. And as you say, there is a depth of reality. There's nothing simple, as it were. And I was interested in what was happening in other people's lives. And there was one thing that, that I was afraid of, and that was that this conviction and this uh, conversion business wouldn't come to our home until one night I was sitting in the church and I kept my eye on my mother. She was sitting near the front and I was watching for her reaction to the word as it was being preached. And I saw her taking her handkerchief out to wipe away the tears. And I was gripped with fear. Now, how are we going to talk to mother when we get back from the meeting? Uh, it seemed as if there was no line of communication. She had gone beyond what we uh, experienced into a realm that was unreal to us. And the thing that struck me when, we, when I got home was mother had very little to say. She was walking about as if she was in a world of her own taken up, I suppose, with the thoughts that had gripped her during the preaching. And I remember one Sunday morning, she said, after the sermon, she said, you know, I felt for the first time, she said, that I came to the cross because of my love of the Savior. You know, not out of curiosity or anything light, but out of love to the Savior. And I, and I recall that. But uh, the atmosphere, the whole atmosphere, as Donald John said, the whole atmosphere was pregnant with a presence that uh, we didn't understand, but it subdued us, solemnized us and created in us a fear of God. The Bible says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. There was a reverence, there was a, 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 a fear of God, there was a sense of solemnity, and there was the reality of things that had not been real to us before, that is, uh, eternity. It seemed as if Eternity was brought to light, and we found ourselves outside the gate and outside the sphere of God's mercy because of the revelation of our sin to ourselves. Conviction of sin. I used to think, you know, when, when I visited the islands, uh, some of the islands, uh, well, they were far out to sea, and sometimes in the winter time, especially the, the sea was rough. And at the beginning of my missionary days, I used to be very sick on board the boat. Sometimes I was sick before I got on the boat at the very thought of it. And I used to think, well, 
it's like conviction. You sail through the storms of conviction of sin. And you look back after the voyage and you think, well, I don't want to go through that again. It's so real. He will convince of sin. And he will convince of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more. In other words, uh, righteousness is Christ himself. And because he had gone to the Father and uh, he wasn't seen anymore, well, the Holy Spirit would come and he would convince the soul of the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And Christ was real in the preaching of his word. I remember at one communion season in the island of Bernera, the it was communion time, and uh, the common cup was being passed around at the communion. And the word that was read that morning was, Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Bozrah, this that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength, I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. And I saw him. It was so real, not as I'm seeing you, but seeing through the word. And I don't know how I ever I held that communion cup in my hand. I was I was so overcome with the revelation of the Christ of God coming up from Edom with his garments dyed. And that broke my heart that his garments were dyed red with his own blood. That broke my heart as a young person. See, in, in revival, the things that we have learned and we know in our heads become real in our hearts. It was, it was all so different. In school, I learned chapters of scripture in English and in Gaelic, and I recited them of parrot-like fashion. But in the revival, they were real and, and sometimes frightening. You know, the fear of God would grip your heart. And uh, after such a revelation and after the solemnity of the gathering and the, the silence sometimes that gripped you, the stillness, the sense of waiting and expecting, now what's going to happen tonight? I mean, sometimes we come across uh, churches that proclaim, if you come tonight, there'll be healings and there'll be this and there'll be that and the other thing. We didn't know what was going to happen. And sometimes nothing seemed to happen. God came in his own way. And uh, you went in expectation of God to do something and almost afraid that it would involve yourself in some way that God would point his finger at your own life as he lifted the mirror through the word of God and you would see yourself as you are and it wasn't a pretty picture. But the solemnity of God's presence and the reality of the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ and of whatever was being preached, it was real, it was uh, penetrating and very, very often and I suppose most times in the revival when we would leave the church, when we would go out into the night, we were almost afraid to speak to each other, lest that awareness of the presence of God would depart. It's um, revival is an experience and revival is a revelation. He will convince of righteousness and he will convince of judgment. Some people quote that and they say uh, that he will convince of judgment to come. Well, he will do that. But it says of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. And all that, that the prince of this world stands for, Satan himself, is judged in a revival like that. And when, when you repent of your sin and turn, you're afraid of, in any way, slipping back into uh, the path that you were on before, you know, because the prince of this world is judged. 
and Satan and all his work come under the judgment of God and you don't want to touch sin and you don't want to to touch your former way of life. It's it's it severs the connection between you and the world. The world doesn't mean anything else. I remember passing by the cinema in Stornoway at the time of the revival, and of course I was a very uh, keen. Uh, well, I was very keen on on films, movies, and all that sort of thing. And I remember passing by it and seeing the placards outside uh, as to what was happening inside. And I said to myself, but what in the wide world did I find in there? It seemed as if there was nothing, nothing in the world that I had left that would satisfy me anymore. I was in another world. And that's that's what the Spirit of God does through his word. And it is the word, the word of God. Quick, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. The letter killeth the spirit giveth life.